questions. Um, ben, go ahead and please read the, the first question. Okay, the first question is, there is a thing I've seen among real true believers and sisters which I call free grace, which I call free grace lordship. Free grace lordship is when, despite believing in eternal security, the true gospel, and and fully subscribe to CES statement of faith, they are very legalistic, even fear based, and even act like lordshippers in their walk with God, i.e., think everything is evil. Examples is they'll say things like TV is evil, music is of the devil, so you are only allowed to listen to Christian music, you should never eat Chinese food because some Chinese, Chinese restaurants have a statue or picture of Buddha, so eating Chinese food is eating food sacrificed to idols. Main, main emphasis is being hard against sin and disobedience rather than grace. Consuming alcohol is forbidden. Absolutely everything is trying to reprogram you into Satanism, so trust absolutely nothing and live like a monk. You shouldn't touch anyone or let them touch you, not unless you know they are good, otherwise their spirit will rub off on you or they could be putting a curse on you. If those brothers and sisters know we are under grace, why do they act as if we are not? Why do why do genuine believers see just see fear, deliberate conspiracy, and corruption in everything, i.e., shouldn't the revelation of the true gospel set them free, not see everything as being evil? That almost sounds like, in their heart, maybe they are not fully convinced of grace. They have enough to get saved, but not enough to live in freedom. So, they are trusting in their ability for, to protect themselves and their ability to obey God rather than resting in grace. I think Romans 14 is not judging those who judging those who, for example, would eat meat in case it was sacrificed to an idol, is where Paul says their conscience of grace is weak. Okay, wow, that's a lot of, it's a loaded question there. Sister Renee, will you go first? Yeah, uh, well, I'd agree with that assumption. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So all this legalism, so what? They offered it to an idol. It's sanctified with prayer and the word of God. It says the idol is nothing because our God is the true God and we are complete in him. So if someone is walking around in this kind of fear, first of all, God doesn't give us that spirit. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and sound mind. That means a peaceful, clear thinking mind. And when you grow in grace through the milk of the word, you realize how much more complete you are in him. And so I would agree this person is a weak conscience. That's what the Bible calls it. A brother has a weak conscience. They're still bound in legalism and fear because they do not understand their liberty in Christ. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So uh, is alcohol forbidden? No. Should you be a drunk? Absolutely not. But you don't walk around in fear. Is there wickedness on TV? Yeah, I'm screaming at it every time I watch it. But it doesn't mean I can't watch it. I don't feel condemned if I want to watch something. Is a music, is, is it edifying and lift up the Lord? No. But I don't listen to the radio to lift up the Lord. I'm not pretending that I'm doing that. And we are allowed to enjoy living. All right. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. A life with purpose, without fear. The ability to love. The ability to be a light to the world. Not a religious fanatic full of fear and condemnation and legalism. That is not what we're supposed to do. Now, sadly, I belong to an independent fundamental Baptist. They have very legalistic views of women. They have legalistic views on how to dress. They have legalistic views on music and all of that. But he doesn't corrupt the gospel. He doesn't say, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, you're not saved. But I would even go a step further and say uh, that some of these things, people are making sin and evil, aren't even listed as that. And that the freedom we have is given to us because we are complete in Christ. And if you have this 
fear. I'm not allowed to celebrate Christmas. I'm not allowed to do this because I was zealous for the Lord and got caught up in Hebrew roots and legalism 13 years ago. And I was miserable. But the more I grew in grace, got full knowledge of his word, and I just kept growing in the grace. And grace does teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. It absolutely does. But it doesn't turn you into some legalist that goes around condemning others. It makes us more aware of the grace that we have. It makes me have a desire to read his word, spend time with him. It, you know, I get I could get uh, condemned because I don't pray as often as I should or as hard as I should and uh, uh, forget to pray for someone. You know, I can get down on myself and legalistic, too if I really want to look at myself, but I keep my eyes on Christ and how I'm complete in him and nothing of this world can do anything against me because I belong to the Lord. None of this stuff defiles me. What goes in my mouth doesn't defile me. What comes out does because it's from the heart. And so I, I really feel bad for these people because they're weak brethren. It says it, their conscience is weak. And so if we're around that person, we should submit to not abusing our liberty lest they get offended. So if somebody doesn't, they want to keep these food laws that nobody's under because of a weak conscience, then I would not eat meat in front of them. I wouldn't want to offend them because I don't want them to be offended or stumble because of my liberty. But as far as myself being condemned and all of that, I live life in joy and in peace, knowing I've been reconciled to God. I am my father's beloved daughter and nothing's going to change that. And I really hope and wish people could get to this place. And I think it comes from staying in God's word and growing in grace. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only thing I can I can see, because we we grow in grace when we're fed on the milk of the word, mm -hmm. not in legalism. It shouldn't. It shouldn't put you into bondage. It should set you free. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. Uh, joy like a river and peace. I'm sorry. Peace like a river and joy like a fountain. Uh, if you're, if you can't uh, identify with that, if that's not the way your life is, uh, there's, there's a problem. Uh, maybe you don't really understand what the gospel has done for you. Uh, Brother Ben, uh, why don't you go ahead and answer the question next? Well, I really have nothing above beyond what Renee said. She said it so perfectly. Um, you know, a couple of verses come to mind uh, uh, is, um, you know, we're, Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are uh, beneficial or profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Um, and so, again, all things are lawful for us. And, you know, we're able to do anything we want. And, 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 again, in terms of our our salvation, there's not there's nothing, no law or nothing can condemn us. Nothing you do or any, any, anyone or anything that can be done to you can cause you to lose your salvation or stop being a child of God. That's impossible. But at the same time, uh, just because of that, uh, we again we, we should like Renee said uh, deny ungodly lust. The grace of God teaches that, you know. Think about what Christ did; He became sin for us, and what it, what He had to go through to redeem us. And uh, why would we want to uh, do something uh, again to to to, do, to abuse that? Um, and and so also too, you know, again, all things are lawful for us. We're not under the law whatsoever. So there's nothing off limits, again, in terms of that would ever affect our salvation. But our mindset should change now. Now that we're under grace, we, we should think, okay, is this profitable for me? Or is it profitable for others? If not, then it's not, not worthwhile doing. And um, and, and also too, is, you know, uh, I think it's the first Timothy where Paul says, uh, it, the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Well, when is the law not lawful? <laughs> it sounds it's it's, it's a, it sounds ironic or almost like a uh, what do they call that? Um, well, come to me later. But uh, it sounds ironic. But but you know, again, a righteous person. The law is not for a righteous person. So we're declared righteous in God's sight. So there's nothing that that uh, 
no one can use a law and say, you, you, you know, you shouldn't do that or, or be focused on law-based principles where we're all about the law-based principles, all about what you, you know, what can you do, and what you can't do. That's, we need to get that thinking of it out of our head. It's about what we should do, not what we must do. And, and again, it's all about, is it profitable to me or is it profit, fro profitable for others? I don't mean profitable in terms of financially or material goods. I mean, uh, spiritual gain. Is it, is it going to help? Is it, are you uh, investing into in, into eternity, or are you just temporarily, uh, you know, wasting your time? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, like so also too, we, we shouldn't be, be brought under the power of any. So anything that would that you know keeps you uh, in bondage, like you you know you must have it, or you, you can't function, or you can't uh, be happy, or whatever it may be. Uh, Paul says we should not be brought under the power of anything. Uh, we are. Again, we're supposed to be motivated and kind of propelled by the Holy Spirit in this life. That's what God gave us. He gave us, um, you know, it says in Peter, by his divine power, he gave us um, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Um, and in the first, first, I'm sorry, Second Peter uh, chapter 1, he gives you kind of a recipe, if you will, of how to live a, a godly life. Where he says, add these, add these things to your faith. And if you do, if you do then you will be richly rewarded. You'll have an abundant kingdom entrance. Um, but if you don't have those things, then you're, you are blind and become short-sighted and you have forgotten, that person has forgotten that he's been cleansed from his own sin, old sins. He's a new man. He's forgotten who he was in Christ. And so, um, I, you know, again, let's not be blind. Let's not be like Esau and short-sighted. Let's think long-term and think about what, what we could do to grow. That's what God wants us to do is grow. Um, and the way we grow is fellowshipping with other believers and abiding in his word. So, um, yeah, I don't think we should be, you know, this this question here has a catalog of things we should or should not do. And once you start getting into, you know, listing, creating lists of things you should or not should not do, I think you're, fall, you're falling into legalism. It's not... It's not about, it shouldn't be, your whole mindset shouldn't be about what you should or should not do, do but what can can you do now that you are a child of God? What what can a saved person do? Think of things that a sa only a saved person can do and a lost person can't. And how what would that be? Well, it's it's growing in the Lord, serving other believers, uh, and serving the Lord. So uh, those are all things a lost person cannot do. So those are the things we should be focused on what should motivate us. All right. Amen. Thank you, brother. Well said. I, um, when Jesus died on the cross and paid for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world, the, the sin problem between man and God was resolved. Um, uh, man is no longer estranged. Uh, the, the scriptures say that at the time of Jesus' death, there was an earthquake and the temple was shaken and the, the curtain that separated the outer area from the Holy of Holies, that was torn in half from top to bottom. And it wasn't just some quirky thing that happened. It happened to be an interesting thing, a historical uh, fact, but it's, it was symbolic to, to show us that uh, what Jesus said, it's finished. He accomplished this for us. The, the, the curtain was there to keep the people separated from God, and that represented sin. Sin was the reason we could not have a relationship with God. But uh, when that curtain was torn in half and the, the uh, holy of holy areas was exposed and open, that shows us that uh, there's no barrier. There's no reason why we cannot have this relationship with God now. Uh, and when we, we believe that and, and have our faith in Jesus and we get eternal life and the, the promise of, of, of heaven, um, th we should have this, as I said, uh, peace like a river, joy like a fountain, the, what we call the blessed assurance, blessed, happy. We should be happy because we, our eternal life in heaven is guaranteed. It's, it's settled. Nothing can change it. Uh, and yet... When there are people who uh, believe that, and then as we find in the book of Galatians, they believe false teachers 
and then think that faith in Christ is not enough, and they add all these other things and nullify the grace of God. So uh, it makes you wonder about the people, but um, I, I, I would caution everybody to, um, if someone uh, doesn't have that peace and joy and blessed assurance, it's sad, it's tragic. But um, does that mean that they, they're not saved? No, not, not, not at all. Uh, um, if they might have not gotten saved. We don't know that. We cannot determine that. Uh, there's no way of us knowing. But if, if a person truly understands the gospel, that um, uh, it, it's all done, and Christ did it all, and, and, and ne there's nothing we can do to add to it, and there's nothing we can do to, to lose it, uh, if when they understand that, then you would think that they would not have to suffer with, you know, under legalism. Uh, and yet, uh, we know that there are some true believers that get led astray and, and they, they suffer with doubts and fears and worries and no longer have this blessed assurance. Um, so let's, let's guard against uh, judging other people's salvation over this issue. Uh, but but uh, if they... If they do have these, these doubts and fears, uh, it, it's telling me that there is a problem and that, that uh, perhaps they never did understand the gospel. Or maybe now that they, they think it's different than, in, than when they got saved. And so we need to, we need to address that and, and not ignore it like it's, there's no problem at all. Uh, we need to make sure they understand that uh, uh, there are no strings attached. Your faith is enough. And there are no conditions on us after that. Uh, all right, uh, Renee or Ben, you want to say any more about this yeah, one? I would, I would refer them back to Galatians. I believe the Galatians were saved, yet they had lost their liberty. Meaning now they had lost the, the freedom, the ability to walk with, in peace by the guiding, the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Now they thought that they could be justified by something they did in their flesh, which was circumcision. And I would say the same thing here. Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? You began in the spirit. Uh, how, did, how did the spirit come to you? How did you get saved? By the hearing of faith. You heard what Christ did, that he was buried. He rose again on the third day. He died for your sins, offered his blood and the mercy to heaven. He rose again. So you know uh, that you have the promise of eternal life, that his blood was accepted on your behalf. That's how you got the Holy Spirit. You heard it. It was by the hearing of faith, not by anything you did. So why would you go back to thinking something you do or don't do in your flesh, like eating certain meats or worried about what idol? God is greater than any idol. It says that. What's an idol? It's nothing. It, everything is to be eaten with Thanksgiving. It's sanctified with the word of God and prayer. That's it. So everything is his. We're complete in Christ. And if anybody gets into fear and legalism like this, it's, it's typical of the man's natural mind to go back to a legalistic thinking, even if they're saved. They think now they've begun in the spirit, but they're going to go back to legalism for their walk. And that's how a lot of people get stunted. They don't actually progress and grow in grace through the milk of the word. They grow in legalism. And that's the wrong way. You're supposed to uh, grow in grace. And again, grace teaches us to deny ungodliness, but it do, it's not a legalistic spirit. Taste not, touch not, handle not. That's what Paul said. So this kind of thinking is a brother with a weak conscience. We need to know we are complete in Jesus. And then that spirit, that Holy Spirit that dwells within us, he leads us, not in a condemning voice, but telling us, What's the right thing to do in these matters? He leads us. So it's just unfortunate that people do get saved. But they go right into legalism when they start their walk. And that is not the spirit we're supposed to walk by. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Ben, any, any follow up? Uh, more to be said or not? No, I think, I think we addressed it thoroughly. All right.